I don't know if you can kind of see the line where the two pieces connect there. Is that where the rust is? Yeah, you see a little bit of rust there? Yeah. There's a, the, there's a joint, so he connects, Jim connected everything with, in, via joint. You can see another one here. So they would all come apart in sections. And what he uses is he just uses pins. Just a, just a pin, the pipe, one pipe will slide into another, and we drop a pin in there and that keeps everything in place. I mean, once that pin's dropped, they're not going to move. Could you put your hand on that pin again? Sure. I'll just have your arm in there. Okay, so that's the pin yeah. that joins the sections together. Yeah. And then they, they, they connect. Yeah, too heavy. Okay. Everything's heavy. How much do you think that little tail piece that's about 10 feet just now uh, weighs? Not too much, but it's over my head. Yeah. Every piece he's, he has, section-wise, I've moved myself. So he made them so that he knows the weight. One of the things that Jim did was he had friends in the truck driving business. So he knew the inside dimensions of trailers and road heights. Uh -huh. Most equipment can go down a highway at 13 feet, 6 inches without needing special permits. So he got people who had flatbeds and he measured up from the bottom of the flatbed. And then he knew that when the piece started here at the foot, he'd measure up to the top. So this piece can actually go on an open flatbed trailer and it's under 13.6, so it can get under every bridge, you know, in the United States, basically, that's, yes. you know, any standard interstate highway bridge without needing special permits or anything. Uh -huh. He also, and this one I'm not sure of, but he also made most of his other pieces where they could fit inside sea containers I think sea containers have a little bit different height height issue with them, but he shipped pieces to Australia and Japan and things like that, and they went in sea containers. Once, even the big ones, even the big ones, like I tell people all the time, once it's on the wood, believe it or not, they all will slide. If you can get enough force behind them, they'll slide. You don't have to lift them once they're on there. The other thing is, I take the birds apart, there's one example that when the bird came apart. And they have them in pieces. Hmm. This one used to hang at his property. This piece here, if you see right up there, like I actually put a bungee cord to help keep it on, but uh, the other there's pieces. hooks there. This one used to sit on the tree, probably about like this size. And he used mm -hmm. to have it suspended there. So, either a museum is going to have to find a tree, <laughs> or they're going to have to make a stand like that one. Jim welded all this stuff. These welds are strong. I could pick up almost these pieces anywhere on them and they're not gonna break. And I don't really have to do too much worrying about it. Now, if we were taking them out to a show like he just re repainted something and we taken out, I'd be a little bit more careful. But since these pieces need to be reworked a little bit, if they get, you know, a little scratch in them, it's not, they're gonna be reblasted and stuff. So, I mean, that gives me a little bit more leeway where I'm not worried about it. And tell me what you see in there. Well, let me see. These are all brake shoes. This is uh, um, goes across the bottom of the motor, the um, uh, A arm, the control upper control arms. We have leaf springs. Here's a where your wheel bolts to. 
That's where your tire would go on. It's your spindle. That's amazing. <laughs> this even still got your little fittings for for lubing everything up, your Zerk fittings. That's amazing. <laughs> Which one do you think is most unusual? I like that one. And there's a couple pieces over in the bag that's made from Volkswagens. Mm -hmm. Like that there. The, the yellow one right there, that's from a Volkswagen. The top of it. You know, it, it's interesting because Jim was making some of these pieces, some of them I never saw. I only worked for Jim for the first 10 years, um, for 10 years, and then after that I was basically his friend. So I would see pieces, you know, when they were done, I would sometimes go to the shop. I loved his work. I loved his abstracts a little bit more. <laughs> I'm an abstract fiend. Um, but I always appreciated this, and I appreciated that he was looking for something that nobody else did. I also got involved with him setting up uh, museum shows. He had his first museum show in Philadelphia, and they are actually going back to Tallahassee now, and the director there is Russell Dawes, 
and Russ was on board at Jim's first exhibit.